All right, here we are with our uh, third video in uh, the beginning algebra series here. And what we're going to do here is looking at um, how to solve for unknowns and equations um, at a basic level. But first, we're going to look at one more thing to have to do with equations. Um, let's say we have 4 plus 5 equals 9. We need to think about the equal sign here as sort of being a divider. Everything on the left should equal everything on the right. And it makes sense. You know, you have everything over here. Once it's um, simplified, you know, you actually do the addition. Um, it should equal what's on this side. Otherwise, it's not really equal. You know, if this was 8, it wouldn't really be equal. So, um, something to notice is that... I want to move this over here a little bit. If I add 3 to both sides here. Let's kind of uh, just think about what happens. Okay, well 4 plus 5 is 3, or 4 plus 5 is 9, and we end up with 12 equals 12. Now what if I subtract, say, 4, we'll say we'll subtract 6 from both sides. Well on this side I have 12 minus 6, on this side, 12 minus 6. And so this will be 6 equals 6. Both here and here I'm showing that as long as I do, you know, if I want to change something on one side, then I have to do the exact same change on the other. Let's say I multiply both sides by 3. Then once I simplify, same thing. Um, and our key idea is if we change something on one side um, of an equation, then we have to do the same thing um, on the other side. All right. Here's why this idea is important. Let's say we have some equation with an unknown like this. Well, ideally, we would like to have our answer in this format. You know, just x equals some number. Because that would just tell us what x is. You know, and our, we want to we solve for x. I guess I should write that out. We want to solve for x. You know, our, our whole point of doing um, algebra is to solve for unknown. So how could I make the left side here have, you know, just an x? Well, what if I change this side to this? You know, I was adding 3, so I'm going to subtract 3. Well, then I would have to do the same thing to this side. Well, on the left, you know, if you add 3 to something, then subtract 3 to something, you just go back to what you had, because you know, you plus 3 minus 3 cancels out. But on the right, we're left with 7 minus 3, which you know, we know how to solve just from doing arithmetic our whole life, and it's 4. I'm going to kind of put this a little closer together. But let's go over what happened. We want to get x by itself. So we wanted to um, you know, sort of figure out what would be the opposite of this. You know, the opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. It all cancels and comes down. Then we do the same thing on this side. You know, if we were subtracting 3 here, we were subtracting 3 on this side. And it gets the variable by itself and you know, does this number. So we get 4. so easy. As long as you break it down, go step by step. So, whoa, that's weird. Let's call our variable f plus uh, 16 is negative 14. Okay. Well, we want to get f by itself, so we need to get rid of this plus 16. The way we get rid of a plus 16 is we subtract 16. Well, if we subtract 16 on the left, we have to subtract 16 on the right. 
Okay, we subtract 16 on the left, so we subtract 16 on the right. On the left, the 16, the plus 16, the minus 16 cancel. We're left with negative 14 minus 16, which we know how to do from our integer video. Is we can change that to uh, negative 14 plus negative 16, and we find that f is negative 30. Now, what we want to do is, um, once we get an answer, we want to make sure that it's the right answer, especially for people that this is new to. So we plug in, um, we take our f that we found, and we plug it in for f in our original equation to see if it's right. Okay, well, negative 13, or negative 30 plus 16, the bigger number is the 30, so we're going to use that sign, you know, it's negative. 30 minus 16 is 14, so we know we have the right answer, and this is how to check. Okay, that's, um, let's look at one a little bit different. Let's say y minus 7 equals 20. Okay, well, how do we get rid of the minus 7? You know, we want to get y by itself on the left. How do we get rid of a negative, you know, minus 7? Well, the opposite of subtracting 7 is adding 7. Okay, and since we added 7 to the left, we have to add 7 to the right. Okay, well, y minus 7 plus 7 is just y, and 20 plus 7 is 27. We take this and plug it back into our original equation and make sure it works. And that's how we keep ourselves from you know, making a mistake. If we do make a mistake, we can go back and find what it is. It's not a big deal. Let's go to another one. Um, let's say we have x minus 3 equals uh, 13. Well, the opposite of division is multiplication. So, if we want to x by itself, we divide by 3, then we need to multiply by 3. Since we're multiplying by 3 on that side, multiply by 3 on the other side. Okay, x divided by 3 times 3 is 3, then 13 times 3 is 39. Alright, we got to check it. We plug the answer we got back into our original equation. You know, we put 39 in place of x. 39 minus 3, we do the actual division. It turns out that it is actually 13, so we have the right answer. Um, one thing on notation, if we have, say, um, uh, I don't know, 4 times x, we're not going to write it like this. We're just going to write um, 4x. It makes it a little clearer to write. So let's say we have 4x equals, um, mm, we'll say just 80. Well, the opposite of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4. So we divide by 4 on both sides. We have just x left on the left, since we have you know 4 times x and then divided by 4. And 80 divided by 4 is 20. So let's go back to our original thing. 4 times 20 is 80, so it's right.